of videotape we would look at again and again. Its immediate impression caught the eye and froze the mind. A propeller blade from a large ship. There it is, man. Look at that. See the curvature of it? We have here now a couple of the uh, photographs of that propeller that you discovered. So then we started some three miles up to where we thought the Titanic had drifted to before it went down, because it had two hours and 40 minutes to drift. This is the top blade. And you see this trailing edge here down to here. This is the hub. The shaft comes through mm -hmm. like this, the ship. And this is the trailing edge of the lower blade. Mm -hmm. And notice down here, this is ocean floor in here, ocean floor here, here, here. You can see the rocks up here and back over here. And here again, you can see those same rocks there that are over here. Mm -hmm. You can see marine growth on the top of the pr propeller here. You can see the outline of the top of the blade. And you'll notice that basically there's this white leaching effect that showed up. That's normal because of the salt water reacting on bronze. Mm -hmm. And uh, also marine life has begun to grow on it some. So even you can even see the pitting. If I can turn this picture over here, I'll show you the, mm -hmm. a close-up of the top of the top blade. I'll show you that. Now you can see the marine life growing on it. You can see the white leaching effect. You see this pitting here, and this is bronze. And you can clearly see that this is Bronze. Oh, yeah. I really thought what had happened was we had lost a blade off the propeller. It felt as if it was the dropping of a propeller. I thought one of the propellers had been broken off. I thought she had cast one of her propeller blades. It sounded to me like that. Have you been on a ship where that has happened? Yes. And you thought it was that? Yes, I thought it was the same thing. It was a feeling as if she may have hit something with her propellers and on second thoughts I thought perhaps she had struck some obstruction with her propeller and stripped the blades off. Like a flash it came to me, we have dropped a propeller blade. I jumped to my feet, remarking to one of the card players who had crossed with me on the Olympic. When we had lost one of the blades from a propeller, I remarked that I guessed we had lost another propeller. I thought probably she had dropped her propeller. It seemed to be nothing worse than a blade falling from a propeller. Now what about Mr. Witter, second class... A smoking room steward. What did you think the Titanic had hit, Mr. Witter? Well, I didn't think she'd hit anything. I thought she'd dropped a blade from the propeller, you know. I thought at first it was the propeller gone, the way she went. We heard a violent noise, similar to that produced by a screw, racing. There goes a blade. It flashed through my mind that possibly it was a piece of wreckage or something. A piece of ice had been struck by a propeller blade which might have given a similar feeling to the ship. I felt a distinct jar, followed by a quivering of the boat. The ship suddenly trembled all over. My first thought was that we had broken a shaft. We thought she had lost her wheel, or something, and somebody passed the remark. Another Belfast trip. One propeller fell off. When we hit the berg, we seemed to slide up on it. I could feel the boat jumping and pounding, and I realized that we were on the ice. We got pretty nearly opposite the iceberg, when there came a tearing sound, and the boat listed a little to one side. The ship seemed to heel slightly over to port, as she struck the berg. Did it seem that the blow came beneath the surface of the water, and caused her to shift? Yes, sir. 
There was an awful shock that made the boat tremble from stem to stern. I felt the boat rise, and it seemed to me that it was riding over the ice. The gigantic liner seemed to quiver and shake, as though alive and uncertain of its course. The boat seemed to shiver and keel over to port. Suddenly, a queer quivering ran under me. Apparently the whole length of the ship, startled by the very strangeness of the shivering motion, I sprang to the floor. We felt it under the smoking room. There was a slight jar, followed by this grounding sound. We could hear the grinding noise along the ship's bottom. What awakened me was a grinding sound on her bottom. The boat continued to quiver for a time. It was a long, drawn-out noise. A loud thump which shook the ship gently, followed by a long, grinding noise. I felt a bump and then a long, grinding noise. A long, shuddering and a grinding and scraping. The vessel shook for a moment and we could feel her slackening speed. The jar of the impact was slight but prolonged. It was like a heavy vibration. There came a heavy grinding sort of shock beginning far ahead of us in the bows and rapidly passing along the ship and away under our feet. A kind of a movement that went backward and forward. I thought something had gone wrong in the engine room. There was a bump. There was another bump. As it got into my room, there was a third bump. Sort of little pushes. I heard some of the sailors talking and heard them say that the ship had struck a spur of the iceberg that jutted out a long distance and had slid upon it, hurting her keel. The captain told us we had been struck amidships or just aft of amidships. I ran out on deck and then I could see eyes. It was a veritable sea of ice and the boat was rocking over in it. Parts of the iceberg were 80 feet high and had been broken into sections, probably by our ship. After the collision, I saw ice all over the sea. It was terrific. For a second the whole boat just stood stock still in its swift tracks, and then it gave a great shiver all through. We felt a sort of stopping, a sort of not exactly shock, but a sort of slowing down, and then we sort of felt a rip that gave a sort of a slight twist to the whole room. It was a twisting motion that shook the boat terribly. The ship shook in the same manner as if the engines had been suddenly reversed to full speed astern, just the same sort of vibration, enough to wake anybody up if they were asleep. We were roused by a noise which seemed to indicate that the engines in the ship had reversed. I looked out of the stateroom window and saw something white passing by. The ship stopped suddenly. She went full speed astern. Well, I felt a good jar. I thought that was peculiar. I looked along the side. But as it came astern, I saw it was an iceberg. The engine was going full speed astern then, so I pulled the lug in. I felt a shock and a kind of shiver of the ship. I heard the engines pounding below, reversing. For about 20 seconds, I should say this pounding continued, then followed another shock, scarcely heavier than the first. Two distinct shocks. Mm -hmm. 